Welcome everybody, G Maple or RoboFights here, welcoming you to an interesting video. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do a dissection of the infamous Rude Boy preset mech. Um, Rude Boy is a mech that has given quite a few people some trouble as an AI opponent, either in arcade or in normal play or just in general. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of explain to you why this guy is a bit difficult for some of you to handle maybe. He's what I would call something of a casual filter um, to say, or to give you a kind of broad general overview of it. And it's a relatively well-balanced mech uh, with some good options, but it has a couple of glaring weaknesses when you actually get down into the nuts and bolts on how the AI acts and behaves and what it does. Um, we're going to be covering it as of early access patch 0.16.2 on November 7th, 2018. So let's go ahead and let's just dive in. I've gone ahead and I've basically rebuilt Rude Boy along with some clarification on what its internals are. Now, you can see here in its overall stats, and not really too special in its hull points or its HP, neither in its stability or its mobility. What it does have a lot of is melee damage as well as a relatively respectable load percentage, which means it's going to be able to do a lot of dodge boosting and utilize those iframes relatively effectively while dealing uh, some decent uh, melee damage to you when you get in close. So this is its base armor, speed, and strength. You can see primarily that it's a strength build, and we'll get into the mechanics of that here in a little bit. Uh, you can see it's max weight capacity. This is all the equipment that it's carrying, uh, or what it, rather what it could, and this is what it is carrying. Other stats, boost drain. It, every time it does a dodge boost, it drains. It's 94.50%. Uh, it's not 100%, so it actually drains less than uh, full... Uh, full weight mech would be. So that, that's actually, eh, it's not too bad. It's about where I like to be personally, although I prefer to be under that. And then of course you get to see the bonus stats. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at it. We'll start at the head. The head is Dewan, which you can see here is a piece that focuses mainly on strength with a little bit of armor and it gives a uh, three melee bonus. Now for this one, um, well, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick so you can get your uh, data sheet there. Heads don't really do too much sometimes. Uh, personally I can I find that they can make or break even if the percentage is small. Um, this isn't too too bad. Um, I'll go ahead and show you what it would look like if you put in those cosmetic reskins that don't do anything as you can see here as I mouse over the stats don't change. You'll just get a different look. So I'll go ahead and I'll dress up Rude Boy in an alternate outfit more or less for you. So we'll go ahead and we'll throw in the Warthog. The torso is going to be what focuses or what uh, is the core, ironically maybe, of your mech. These are how most of its stats are going to be played out. So pick the core or the torso that's going to play to what you're going to want to actually utilize for the mech itself. Uh, Myrmidon is a pure strength build. Uh, you can see here, 300 strength, and then average any others with a nice melee bonus. There's your little lore thing, which I'm sure will be expanded eventually. Now, a lot of people like to use Myrmidon because strength has so many benefits to it, 
namely it lets you carry more, it lets you hit harder with melee, and it lets you boost more efficiently because you have, you're less weighed down by the load. Um, it does a lot of things directly and indirectly. Strength is overall might be a bit too good, uh, in my opinion, personally. So we'll just go ahead and we'll flip it over to Simeon, which is the reskin. And these reskins are available by putting in a uh, code that you can get by punching in and solving a puzzle that was released a little while back. I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, yeah, I might link to the puzzle or I might link to the actual input codes below that you could plug in on the game's main menu screen, just type them in. So we'll do the simian there, we'll flip on over to the arms. Quillen is a frame set that uses mostly speed with a little bit of strength. Uh, pretty solid. Uh, I won't get too much into it. That's just adding a little bit of uh, mobility onto them with, of course, a little extra strength. So we'll flip that to the alternate. Looking pretty good. Legs. Shrike is another popular one because it focuses mainly on strength with a little bit of speed, and it gives a nice melee bonus. So we'll go ahead and we'll flip that over. So this is basically kind of what an alternate reality uh, rude boy might look like. Exact same stats, exact same everything, just looks a little different. But we'll go ahead and we'll flip them back real quick, just so we don't confuse anyone. Bear with me here. I have to admit, I'm a very big fan of the Warthog head. Okay, so let's get into the armaments here. We have the Mugen Zakura, which is the katana weapon. Let's go ahead and we'll flip through its stats real quick. Okay. Now the katana is pretty interesting for a few reasons. Uh, since we are focusing on what is currently publicly available, uh, we won't get too far into any potential uh, uh, rebalancing possibilities or anything like that. I do know that the developers have discussed potentially bumping it up from a 750 weight weapon to a thousand point weapon since it is faster than the fusion blade uh, when it strikes and it deals about as much damage as a an ETAC which is a thousand point weapon so while it doesn't really have that much in the way of any defensive abilities like providing armor hyper armor or iframes when you swing with it. It is very fast, it reaches pretty far, and it does pretty good damage both melee uh, armor and melee stability, as you can see there. Typically when you swing with this weapon you'll get a stun state or a flinch or whatever you'd like to call it, where for a brief window the hit enemy can't really do anything so you can quickly follow up. This is very handy for the Mugen Sakura to chain its special abilities or its directionals to gain Kanji, which is its special ability, which lets it access uh, several different techniques. Now, there have been a few bugs with the Katana, which I'm sure is the reason quite a few of you may have had issue with dealing with Rude Boy, there was a glitch that was recently discovered to where if you would swing with one of its special abilities, its hitbox would actually expand for the next one. So basically think, think of in a fighting game, somebody punches you and it connects and the next punch they land whether they do or they don't, actually, 
that attack now hits, let's say, four to five feet in front of you. So you're going to be wondering, how the heck did he hit me? That doesn't make any sense. Well, that was a bug or a glitch or whatever you'd like to call. Uh, it's been discovered and it will be patched. I'm not sure if it's patched publicly yet because it was kind of recently, but it will be with the next public build and it is fixed, I believe, in the preview builds. So check that out. Another issue was where if you would hit uh, with a neutral ability, just not any of the directionals, it would generate a kanji. Uh, that's been one that's been a little bit difficult to kind of squash as a bug or a glitch or what have you, uh, but it has been, has been addressed in the public build as well as the preview build, of course. So just a little bit of history behind that on why you may have found it a little bit difficult when she finally got in melee range of Rude Boy. Now, uh, as I mentioned before in my Spooktober skirmish post-mortem video, there are a few interesting things about it with uh, AI. AI will only ever use level one or level four of the katana. Level 1 being a very quick kind of get off me slash, which is very effective for disrupting people, and level 4 being an attack that lets you basically be in iframes as you stand still and unleash a sizable area of effect uh, dome type attack, which does some pretty hefty damage for HP and stability. And that level 4. AI, as of this particular build that's public, does not recognize that as a threat, so it'll go ahead and just walk right in and get hit by it. For players, it's obviously easier to run away from, since there's a relatively ominous sound, there's a pose with it, there's all kinds of warnings. AI, not so much. And the AI will, however, uh, dodge cancel out of that level 4 from time to time if, for whatever reason, it detects a threat to it. It's unusual, but it does happen. So, Mugen Sakura, very effective melee weapon uh, with a whole lot of options to it. But let's go ahead and let's keep moving on here. Next we have the Liberator. And this is your bazooka, or your missile launcher, your rocket launcher, whatever you'd like to call it. Primary fire fires some straight fire rockets. They're okay for close combat. Um, they miss frequently and pretty hard if your opponent's moving too much. Typically what most people will do is they'll use the alt fire, which fires that kind of uh, three missile corkscrew that homes. That does a decent chunk of stability damage and HP damage. And if you're careful and you're smart with it, you can actually chain that like you can with the burst rifle to create people in a stun lock or a stun state or a flinch state or whatever you prefer to call it to keep them in place. Now, Rude Boy doesn't use the rocket launcher or the bazooka that much. Uh, it will when its swarm missiles on its back are on cooldown as a range option. Also worth noting that if you use the Liberator in close combat, you will get splash damage on yourself from the explosions. So the shoulder armament is called the Long Lens Shoulder Armor. Um, you can see here some stats on it. It provides damage deflection and stability deflection. These are, of course, these right here. And these are nice because they provide a thousand point uh, defensive option. And what you'll see with a lot of AI mechs 
is they will use the activation of these, the charge, because it provides uh, decent armor and I'll let you just basically kind of punch through um, range damage and melee damage. So what an AI mech will often do with these is use them not necessarily to close distance or to start melee combos like a lot of players will. They'll use them to absorb incoming ranged attacks. They also provide that passive uh, deflection bonus and that's very handy because that's basically uh, free HP and free armor for some of your other attacks. Stability deflection and armor deflection is pretty potent, honestly. And for the bat here, he of course has Yulong missiles, which are back swarm missiles. Uh, they fire a cloud of missiles. They track decently, but they have a kind of damaged donut to where they won't hit anything that is immediately in front or close to you. And if you're too far away, they're going to miss as well. So your overall package here is a mech that can pepper you with some high damage rockets from these uh, swarm missiles back here or get you in a nice stun lock with the Liberator. And when you get close, he can attack you with a Katana with a hefty melee damage, or just punch through and ignore a lot of your ranged attacks or your hefty uh, counter attacks with the shoulder pads. Internal-wise, 1,000 health, can't really beat it. It's, and you can see here that red number is what he would be without that. So a relatively weak HP-wise mech uh, with just uh, 4,050 HP, but with that gets to 5,050. And then you add in or factor in the 10% deflection he's going to be dealing with. Uh, and that deflection, by the way, for these is both melee and range damage. Uh, for some reason, that text is bugged or not correct. Um, so basically he has a decent sized health pool. Artificial muscles for more of that damage with that katana. Uh, some really nasty stuff with this. And finally leg actuator. And what it does is it provides uh, dash boosting or dash bonuses to it, which means that when he swings with that katana, he'll go further. Uh, early on, when the Rude Boy was first introduced, the katana was a little differently, works, worked a little differently, and allowed you to cross a lot of distance with it. It does less of that now, but utilizing its side attacks with leg actuators is still pretty nasty and not to be underestimated. So, we'll just go back here and we'll do kind of a uh, practical. Let me just grab my controller. Alright, bear with me one second. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we will test with a dummy real quick to kind of show you what he does. Ready. Alright, so we'll go ahead and we'll fire off our swarm missiles first. So... You see they exploded before they even hit the target. Uh, that's thanks to that uh, damage donut I was talking about before. You see they stop right around uh, here when I was back there. So let's go ahead and get a little bit closer. Eh, right about here. We'll just fire off the short volley. Hits a little bit. Back a little bit further. More. Yeah, that's about your butter zone right there. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll get nice and close. Wait for the recharge, and you see no damage all the way back there, and certainly not up here, uh, where they all miss. Uh, so this is a weapon that a lot of people like to charge forward into to kind of get out of the rain, and at that point, he just kind of gives you one of these or those, you know, collect some kanji, 
knocks you down after two hits. Tap that, tap that, and uh, let's go ahead and we'll fire one of these off here, level four, boom. Fire off some rockets there, number three, and that's enough to kill you. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and try something here for you guys. We'll back out. Now, if you type the word training mode on the main menu, no spaces, you should hear a little ding. Uh, I'm, I can't since the, my computer is on mute, so I can record. And we go to the garage again or anywhere else, you'll be able to see uh, kind of your hit boxes and your hurt boxes. Yeah, there we go. So Ready. this green go. means I can be hit. We'll dash. If it's not covered, you have iframes. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, do a little charge attack with the shoulder pads here. You see I turned blue, that gives me armor uh, to where it's like any other fighting game where you could hit me, but it's not really going to do too much to me. And one of these. And we'll swing with the katana to show you. And the red that you'll see is the hitbox. Sorry, the, yeah, the hitbox. So swing that, swing that, swing that, swing that. And I don't think... Yeah, there we go. And we'll go ahead and I'll show you the level 4, what that looks like mechanically. You see I'm in iframes, can't be hit. Now, the hitbox, hurtbox system isn't as robust as I prefer, but it helps get the job done. So, and it's kind of a rude boy in a nutshell from a perspective. Now, to beat him is relatively easy. You just gotta have to watch out for the katana and keep the pressure up. So let's go ahead and we'll fight the real rude boy and kind of give you an idea. So we'll go multiplayer, custom game. We'll do a duel on the good old fashioned arena. Random music, time limit 20 seconds because you can't beat the classics. Yep, there he is. And I'll go ahead and pick... Uh, who do I got here? These are some guys I've had fun with, just messing around. And eh, we'll go with uh, Cyclone Duster here. That's a PvP mech I've got. Alright, go ahead and move that out of the way. And we'll just go ahead and I'll give you a kind of a an idea of what you can expect. So Ready, go! Buy my Strelka. Dodge those. Kind of beat them out there. Use my shoulder shield to block. And this is a very kind of counter style mech where. Oh. It's very easy to get a little bit tilted on them. Make sure you let your stability recharge with a rude boy uh, for sure, otherwise, you're going to be taking a lot of damage. And this is a mech I haven't practiced on too much. Oh. Yeah, there you go, that shoulder shield. Uh, used a great effect there to kind of absorb that Strelka hit. So we'll Ready, see if I can make a fool of myself go. here. Now I see he's caught in the held weapon bug or glitch. You have to be very careful because he's very aggressive. 
So we'll absorb those hits. Off a couple of our own rockets. Counter punch. You can see that uh, hitbox of the katana coming into pretty good, pretty good use right there. Oh. <laughs> good old Strelka tracking. Not the best. So we're in a bit of an uphill battle here. Probably, yeah, there we go. Alright, we'll try a mech that's a little... a little less experimental here. But that's a general idea of how most fights with Ruboy will go down. We'll return to the lobby, and we'll try again. I do have to admit that was pretty gosh darn embarrassing. So we'll see who else we have here. Eh. Do I want to? Nah, that's cheating. None of my, uh... I'll start boys are here, but we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, try Tavern Keeper out. Go insane again. And we'll try Ruboy one more time. He is a particularly difficult on public build, thanks to those that katana hitbox issue which is fixed in preview uh, so definitely give that a try ready go so let's scoot right in here hmm. I'm not familiar with these weapons as I like to be So you can kind of get away from them if you're not overloaded. As a popular uh, oh yeah, got me with uh, that range there, nasty. Okay, we'll try again. Ready? He's Go. he's he's still difficult sometimes, even if you know what you're doing, obviously. And it's just about being. Sorry for the clacking. Uh, one of those old school type controllers here plugged in. Go. All right, so getting close, kind of fade them out. Oh, no, that nope. Pop up one of these to interrupt. Pop up another one. Nope. Yeah, and there you go. It's basically just baiting his uh, katana strikes to get him in a spot where he's vulnerable, or baiting out his swarms till he's out and his rockets till he's out. It's uh, think of it a lot like well, like Dark Souls or any other type of game like that, where you basically have to just kind of watch and study what he's going to do. Um, wait till he uses up those options or those patterns and then go ahead and take advantage of it. Uh, he can still be tricky from time to time. It's been a while since I fought him and I probably should have pre-fought him before uh, I recorded this video. Uh, but uh, pretty solid mech, so well done on the devs that made him. Uh, still decently challenging. Uh, for most folks, I'm, I'm sure, uh, myself included. Oh, actually, let me turn that on. But yeah, that's uh, our autopsy of Ruboy. Ruboy in a nutshell.
good stuff. So thank you all for joining me. I hope this video was helpful. Please feel free to leave a comment, like our video, subscribe to us, uh, share, yell at me, whatever you'd like. Have yourselves a great day and we'll see you again. Bye.